Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today, including the hurricanes, space weather, NOVA events, and climate. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find mostly a day identifying things to keep an eye on. Southern coronal hole turning, southern active region calm. Top left, we see both the next coronal hole and the incoming active region on the north. This one appears to have a much larger expanse than the active region on the south. We'll be monitoring as this one crests over the limb tonight or tomorrow. Let's take a quick look at the solar wind. Up top, top left in the purple and top right in the yellow, we see two plateaus as the second component off the coronal hole stream arrives this morning. If you recall, it was an arch-shaped IMF zone, so we are seeing one wave off the front side hit, and then this morning, the trailing portion. Neither tremendously powerful and minor instability is all we're seeing at Earth. That's KP index bottom right. Hurricane Hannah roared onto the Texas coastline yesterday. Storm surges, flooding, damage to houses and other infrastructure, transformers blowing and knocking out power. The system is sliding southwest into Mexico. I wanted to show you the curvature of the lightning returns midday before the entire continent lit up with the peak of energy discharge from that day. One outflow of the hurricane will be stretching across the states to the north, pretty much all the way. Also, folks, the coming day is one where the Hawaiians stare northward. The storm is set to track that way, but it's a very close call. Eyes on it. Heading next to the South Atlantic, top seismic event of the day struck the uninhabited region down there at 6.3. In terms of the science, let's start with a quick note on solar energetic particle distribution in a flare. This is the full solar system map unwrapped into a rectangle, with the red being the solar system longitude facing the eruption, but indeed this is why a flare on the far side of the sun can still be important. It's got a great chance to pound Earth with high energy protons. One of the reasons you need to look at particles and not irradiance or sunspots. Moving on next to a gorgeous shot of the Orion Eridanus super bubble in false color, Edges of the bubble can be seen along with the remnant material inside glowing much more energetically. Folks, the focus on smaller nova has got to be encouraging for the future of that subfield of science. Looking at ever more transient features and smaller versions of the massive supernova we could only hope to see with our eyes in ancient times. Few new candidates and deeper analysis in this one. And of course, if someone didn't try to review the major updates in the field, it wouldn't be a major shift. Indeed. The rise of the rapidly recurring nova in astronomy has given rise to the ultra-long period recurrent solar micronova examinations, as they are doing here. The more they study and discover these faint or rapidly recurring events, the more they will settle on the popular idea that all nova recur until they supernova and end for good. Of course, with endings come things anew. Most of these stars are found in molecular clouds, remnants of past nova events, and they show the early stages of ring formation and planetary system creation at various stages as we look in different directions of the sky, article, photos, and the animation of their heliocentric position is linked below. We are stepping out to the climate next and looking at a major model deficiency. Apparently when looking for the most extreme days, they're able to capture the cold ones and get them to match, but not the heat. When it comes to the climate sensitivity modeling, there really may be no merit in it at all. To get different inputs to match, you have to ignore decades of time and then blur your remaining one-year averages into five-year averages. I am really hoping that team from the recent internet-popularized AGU paper is listening after I Sherlock Holmes their paper the other day. Their climate sensitivity modeling is garbage. Folks, up next we've got a paper describing how the modern cosmic ray maximum is going to change the safe space exposure periods for astronauts. And yes, it certainly will do that to some degree. But alas, in order to perform that analysis, the foundation that is needed, as we've been saying since late 2018, is that we have entered the modern cosmic ray maximum, and it's expected to continue. Now that's a cold attack from above in terms of albedo. But yet another model here is taking the cake on a cold attack from below. We've said it many times, when we can be so lucky to have the ice locked at the polar region, we have interglacial warmth at lower latitudes. When that ice leaves the polar region, that's one of the ways we trigger an ice age, or in this model, a snowball earth. This one looks at the random planet model, but every which way they try this, if the polar ice is disrupted and quickly set to sea, it's not global warming we're going to have to worry about. 
We greatly appreciate your support. And indeed, you can learn about all of this in our textbook, but there's also a ton to be learned here online in the Climate Playlist. You may have noticed, it's in the description box below these videos every single day here on YouTube. And when you get to that list, if you are short on time, the first one, scenario number four, and the last one are really all you need. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.